Next vehicle we're gonna be doing is a 2010 Camaro SS. We're gonna be doing an iData Link head unit and a rear view camera. This car is in very good condition with only like 9,000 original miles on it. So customer wants to update the head unit. So we're gonna be going from the stock head unit over to the new Pioneer with the iData Link dash kit and wiring harness. This is what the radio looks like before. Basically the stock radio with the Boston. And how I can tell is if you look down here on the radio or on the speaker, it says Boston Premium Audio. So these are the parts we're gonna be using. This is the backup cam we're gonna be using from Metra. We're gonna be using this Pioneer. It's the Avic W8500 NEX, full navigation unit the Maestro RR, and the new Maestro dash kit. This is my first time ever doing this one, so hopefully this will be pretty nice. Comes with a whole bunch of harnesses, and then a 40 EU55 antenna adapter, which I don't have here, which is on its way. So hopefully these will be all the parts that we need to make this all work. First step we're going to start with is we're gonna take off this trim panel right here. And basically you can just take your plastic pry tool and just snap that bad boy right in there. And just be very careful with it when you're pulling it up. And then this whole piece will basically pull up for you. It's all one big piece right there. So if you can see, that's how this whole piece will just unsnap. I've got this as a manual, so I got it pulled back here. So we're gonna pull this this whole entire piece back and then unclip the clips from the back side of it. And the clip, if you look at it basically right here it's one big main clip right here so if you're looking it's gonna be right here and then you can unplug this which basically I think is right here yep and then this plugs unplugs right here and then this whole piece will come right out and then you got this piece separated right here from the actual center console now, if you can see in here, this is the main clip that we, we unplugged. And then right here we have a 7 mil, and right here we have a 7 mil. So we need to take those two 7 mils out so we can pull this whole entire head unit out frontwards. I'm going to take these two 7 millimeters out. There's one. And then here's two. All right, now we've got both the seven millimeters out, so we can go ahead and pull this unit and we're gonna pop the clips around it to get it out. And you're gonna be very careful when you pull on this because you don't wanna damage anything on the dash. I would definitely recommend using the plastic pry tools, do not use anything else. And then that whole unit will come right out. You don't wanna mar the plastic, so use plastic pry tools. Very cheap, they're from Harbor Freight. And then you can pull this whole entire unit out. Now on the bottom down here, you're gonna see that this is gonna have to be finagled because this part is blocking it. So you're gonna have to kind of pull up and then get to get this to come out right here. This is the plug you wanna unplug right here when you pull this out. Basically, this is the back plug where it goes. So this plug right here unplugs from right here. That's the only plug you have on here. Um, and then, like I said, you just finagle this part on the bottom right here, through here. Basically, just what I did is pulled this big 
you see this big old clip right here. You just pull this down and get it out from underneath where it's hooking around it. And now you're at the point where you can just take these four seven millimeters out and then this whole unit will come out. Now we're gonna take these four seven millimeters out. Okay, now that these are out, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the radio out. And then on the back side, you're gonna have multiple plugs. They're very similar to BMW plugs. These are the plugs that you're left with. Basically right here, this piece right here is a cantilever. So basically this whole thing will pull up and then when you push out on it, it pulls the harness out from the back of the radio. You have your XM and then you have your regular antenna. This regular antenna kind of looks like a 40 EU10, but they're calling for a 40 EU55, but might be able to use a 40 EU10. We'll see what happens. But this is all you have to plug into with the iDataLink and your harness and antenna adapter. Now a lot of these I do, they don't have any problems, but this one's going to definitely have a problem. So usually I do the Sony's, which are single den chassis with a double den face. This one is a double den, it's a Pioneer, so it's a full double den with large harnesses. This particular unit right here, this block right here is gonna have to be cut out because this is sticking way far out. If you guys can kind of see, you're gonna have to cut on the sides here, the down here on the bottom and the side here. This has to come out because Usually I do single DIN chassis, double DIN face Sony's, but this is a Pioneer he brought to us as a full navigation unit. It will have problems going back without this being cut out. So you have to cut this plastic part out in the back or you'll have problems with the depth of this thing trying to not go all the way back. Yeah, gets the job done to get this out so that we have plenty of room to fit the uh, Pioneer back there because you do not want it to not sit flush in here and then it won't snap back in. So you wanna make sure you cut that all out completely. We just used a Dremel to do that harness right here this is the pioneer plug which we're going to clean all this stuff up but these are the speaker leads right here we're using these black packs because this is boston so that but they have resistors or capacitors in there um, got all that connected the only thing you're really going to connect is basically your yellow your red your black for ground they do have reverse signal here um, they do have parking brake this we wired up for the pioneer but that's pretty much it's just basic color to color then all these plugs down here will plug over here into the brain. So we did mount the brackets on, which we'll probably have to adjust when we get this into here, but there's the brackets. So once we get this all wired up, we'll put in there, but we just want to kind of show you it's simple wire to wire, and they have a diagram on iDatalink's website for each one of these vehicles. There's a lot of wiring for this. This is the antenna adapter that plugs in. We did end up using a 40 EU10. That way you don't have to buy the expensive amplified one. So that does work. Um, plugged in everything for the OBD2, all this. This is a lot of wiring. If you don't know what you're doing, this is probably not a good idea to try to wire this up. This is very difficult to do. So we've got to get all this cleaned up and try to get it back into that hole. So that way we can get the radio into there. Okay, we got the radio installed. Just a provision to my last video I made. Make sure you have the brackets in correctly. I had them backwards. Make sure you get them left and right correctly because I had them in backwards and it wouldn't allow this piece to go in correctly. So make sure that you have the left and the right brackets. Basically, there's a strong square side. That is the back side. And then there's a round side, which is the front side. And you want to use it or otherwise it keeps this from not going back correctly but the dash kit looks really nice installed everything's back in we just you know basically put everything all back together there's a lot of wiring behind here so that's kind of a sucky thing but it all actually fits believe it or not especially when you cut out the back of the dash so everything looks really good when it's all finished it really looks oem matches everything looks really good
Okay, so here is the unit all installed. Really, really nice the way it integrates. This is the Pioneer 8500NEX. We use the iDataLink kit. If you push the climate button right here, it shows everything right here. You can turn the fan up and turn the fan down. You can also use the manual buttons here to be able to turn the, man, the fan up and down as well, which is really nice. It gives your outside temperature, AC, heated seats. Pretty much all of these things are all digital now, which is really nice. You push the gauge button right here, and that gives up all your gauges, your tack, miles per hour, intake, fuel, pretty much all that stuff right there, which is really nice. Sorry about the glare, because the way the sun is. Um, your lock and unlock buttons are right here, which are pretty much like normal from stock. Your fan up and down button is right here to turn your you know, AC or heat up and down. You can also push this info button right here and it tells you your PSI, battery voltage, any check engine lights, anything like that. And you also have defrost right here. So this kit works very seamlessly, just like stock. So everything looks really good, works really good. You even have your USB down here, HDMI, aux in. Everything's all really nice and neat down here so you can plug it in and don't have to have any cables exposed. It's just a really good looking dash kit. Really nice the way it integrates in. Everything works perfectly fine. Very nice. We also did a rear view camera on this. So when you put it in reverse, there you go. Really like the way this dash kit and everything looks. Super OEM and clean looking.